Welcome to Assessments 2.0. This major update focuses on an easier UI for building assessment templates. Additionally, we have added fields for scoring tips, explanations, private and public comments, new report printing templates, functionality to add items to a template easily once in use, and validation rules around that, ability to import assessment items from a CSV, and the ability to recall responses from previous attempts. We're gonna walk through building an assessment from scratch and then work through scoring and printing, and then we'll go back and revise a template that has already been in use. Everything is backwards compatible, so you'll find that to be uh, easy to adjust. So let's dig in. Previously, as you headed in to make a new assessment, you would have to create your items first. Now we can dive right into a template and build a new assessment. From here, we'll enter a sample demo assessment, a title, and a description. This is to show off Dev's work. And in bright bold, it tells us we need to add a category here. So now we can quickly add as many categories as we want, delete if we need to, and we can um, start by entering, we'll add two categories. So hardware category and um, line of business application category. And you can see we have buttons to create items or add existing items. So we're gonna start with all of the create item functionality. So when I click into this, you can see right out of the gate, we give you two templates, but know that you can build any type of item that you want. So let me show you a yes, no template. That's a simple red green. And if this is something like infrastructure wiring and this would be disorganized and lacks labeling. And yes would be basically tidy and identifiable. So now as you're looking at these responses, you might think, oh, I'd like the client to understand why this is so important. We have added the ability to create an explanation or potentially a remediation step here. Note that when you score this, you'll also have private and public comments. So this would be something that you want in every template for all clients. So the important part for this would be, this adds downtime in the event of a network issue. And of course, you could add lots of other pieces and parts, as you can see with the WYSIWYG editor. But I'm going to leave that there and close that. As a matter of fact, I'm going to collapse the entire item. Uh, and note that this show properties is for this item. If I want to add a description for the entire category, so this will address security and stability needs for all devices. Uh, and then I can close that up if I would like. So if I wanna add another item within this category, now when I click add item from template, you'll see that I can duplicate that type of item. But first I wanna show you the stoplight item, think about what that might mean, red, yellow, green. So when I add that, I have red, yellow, green. So this one, let's go ahead, and you can see I chose to add that one above. So this one, will be um, workstation health. And if it's at risk, that is because some workstations are past end of life. Uh, if it's in needs of attention, maybe some workstations are approaching end of life. And if it's satisfactory, all workstations are healthy. Now, if you think about, I'm gonna want this for all of my clients. I do have some situations where they don't have workstations, so I can add a response. It automatically just populates a satisfactory, but in the dropdown, you can choose one of the others, which will then color. Note, it will not reorder on this page, but it will reorder based on the color scored ranking once we get to the scoring page. So don't sweat that here. 
Uh, and I might say no workstations exist. I'm going to go ahead and save. I always think it's a good idea to um, save after a couple of items just in case my internet goes out or something. Uh, and know that we do have some validation rules. Uh, so it will do some spot checks for you. You do have to have unique category names within a template, but you need to have unique item names within your entire site. And why is that? That is because we can add existing items and so we don't want them to duplicate names. So it will give you a warning uh, and that would be why should you see that pop up. So while we're talking about existing items, let's go ahead and find one. And I'll actually put an existing item in the second category, although as you could see, I could add one here above or below that item. But I wanna actually add a new item to my uh, line of business software category. So I'm gonna click on add existing items and you'll see I quickly get a listing, a cataloging of all of the items already in my site. So this is very fast to pull up. And if I know that I wrote an item about application, I can see, I just start typing, I search for it and I'll say, okay, if I think this is the item I wanna take a look at, I can come to the right preview choices, decide that is the one I want and I will select that, save and my item populates where I can still edit it if I would like to. Now, one thing to note, if I go to add another existing item below this one, that item is no longer uh, available because we have already used it once in that category. However, if I want to use it in the above category, and uh, why might I want to do that? Maybe I have some procedure that I'm going, and the categories are pre-project, mid-project, post-project. I may want to have the same type of checkpoint in each of those categories. So I might want to use the same item in two categories. So I can uncheck restrict items already in use, and you'll see that that item becomes available again. So I can select it and choose it in the platform and I'm good to go. Save it and I'm ready. Now I'm actually going to delete that item. Uh, note, it will give you a warning anytime you wanna delete the item. Any item you delete will delete it from that template, not from the site itself. And we will have uh, some validation if you have used the item on an assessment already. So we'll show you that in just a bit. The other piece I mentioned was that when you add an item, you can duplicate an item and I can choose to duplicate above or below. So I'm gonna duplicate this item below. And this time, uh, remember it puts copy of because I'm not allowed duplicate names, but I wanna change this to server health. And then I'm gonna go change all of my workstations into servers. And here, if you think, well, when somebody is running this assessment, they may need some help on where they find this information. I'm gonna go back into show properties, and now I'm gonna add something in how to score. In this case, I'm gonna say, review the asset list in lifecycle insights. But I could add a link to a doc, a URL to something inside my PSA or RMM or any other tool that might be handy, could ask to refer to a person, give screenshots, whatever. On how to score, this information will be available on the blank form. Uh, so it, you can get a printout of this along with the items now, which is new. So let's go ahead and save. So now that I have saved my changes, I, um, I take a look, I can collapse my category so I can see how everything looks. I can collapse and expand all over on the right so I can expand all of my categories, I can expand all of my items. So you'll want to keep an eye on that if you wanna take a look around. But the one thing I might wanna do is rearrange some of this. So we've given you a layout view, upper right, that will allow you to move everything around. It just gives you the shortened version of everything. So maybe I wanted infrastructure wiring first, um, then workstation, then server. Uh, and maybe I wanted my line of business application category first. So all of that you can drag and drop, 
save that, that will update for reporting. And now what is certainly new to the platform is the ability to download this with the doc that will allow you to score it. So if you need to print this out or email a copy of this to your client so they can work on it, maybe you wanna hand a copy to a tech or an engineer, you can do so if they're not working inside the platform. You can choose to include an empty row if you think you might write in some additional responses uh, and you can include scoring instructions if you specified any for an item. So we'll download that now. Let's take a look at what the printout looks like. You can see that here we've got the name of the template and the description each of the, the category and then each of the items under that category. So you can see we moved line of business with the single item there. All of the choices, sort of a checkbox on the side so you can mark the correct answer. Space at the bottom. Uh, and remember that these are always in Word. So if you needed to add an additional comment or note, you could add that here or an additional response as you're going through the assessment. In the hardware category, we put a description in, in the properties, and then under server health, remember that we added scoring instructions. Note on this form, we don't have the explanation because that comes out in the analytics, the reporting of that. So we will put that away if we decide we like it. We can use it as is, or we can come back in either in layout view and adjust anything or we could go back into form view and check out uh, whatever we need to do to add items etc back to the assessments main page and now we're actually going to go in and score a new event so we'll click into our assessment events and i'm going to perform a new assessment event so the sample demo assessment is the form that i want um, we will do that. It auto populates today's date. So that was a request that we could just start there and then change it if we wanted to. So the form scoring looks very familiar. Um, it's very similar functionality. You still have the ability to add a response. Um, this currently is the old UI piece for that. So if we want to add extra response here, uh, that maybe is acceptable risk. And as usual, we can do this as a global response across all events, uh, just for this client or just for this event only. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that and score it. Now you'll see a couple additional pieces. We could add a public comment. So this is a large concern for this client. Maybe a reminder as discussed during the assessment interview. And we could add some private notes. We also have ticket one, two, three, four, five to review on our end that we don't want to forget about. And if you have given this assessment before, you will be able to show pre, if you've given this item before, you will be able to show previous responses uh, so we have given this exact item before. Uh, they scored satisfactory and their response was um, green. So if you have done that, uh, that's a good way to kind of do a comparison. So if this isn't my baseline, uh, but a new, a new template, and you'll see, we'll even pull that item from old templates. So if you're changing your assessments, you can still track that data historically. So you can go through and score all of the pieces and parts as we're accustomed to. And then the documentation for downloading has changed. Before I download this, let's take a look. Now the template details or the assessment details are right on the screen instead of having to toggle between the two and you can edit. So if you wanna add particular comments for this particular assessment, so this is comparison assessment for second business review. I can save that, you'll see it there. And the other piece is that we have, let me unscore one of these items. 
We can show all items, we can show only unanswered. So some of these really long assessments, um, you wanna just find the ones that you haven't answered yet. And sometimes you only wanna show the actual answered assessment, especially if you're sharing your screen um, when you're reviewing the item. I will leave it as show all items. Again, if you want to add any of the pieces and parts, right, we have the same functionality where you could clone a response um, or edit that particular response as well. I'm going to download this. I have a few options. On the assessment form detail template, we can include the public comments if they exist. We can choose to include private comments uh, and we can show items that have not been scored or not. So if I don't wanna present that to the client, I can just download like this. And when I pull up this template, you'll see how it all um, rolls out. The response, the public comments, the private comments, um, and we responded to all of these items. So they these all printed out. And you can see that the item I didn't respond, infrastructure wiring health, didn't show up on that printout. I'm going to show you the other reporting. Let me grab uh, one of the longer assessments. So now we have the ability to do an assessment summary. We auto select for by default at risk, needs attention, and acceptable risk items. Again, it'll be in the new formatting. And you can see again, we've got the landscape view of it along with each of the pages. And at the end, as usual, we have the pages for uh, the individual item analysis where you get all of the red items uh, along with their summary. And if you had done any public comments, this is where they will print out. So this is really where you can discuss what needs to be done to solve this problem. And then we also now have the short form. Let me change assessments for the short form. The CMMC is a good example of why you might want to use a short form assessment. So this is when the questions are um, really long, but the answers are just yes, no. So you want to give space so that you can see the full item along with the coloring. So two reporting options now, which mirror what we had, but we've tidied up the reporting to give a more consistent look heard is the ability to upload items from a CSV file, so import and assessment, which we've added in this release. So I go into the Manage Assessment Templates, Import Assessment from CSV, and choose our file. Let me type in. And once I grab my file and hit Open, I then choose to load and map the columns. So from here, you can see that we're gonna match the column in the file with the uh, field inside of Lifecycle Insights. And we have columns for each of the response types so that we can map there in case you happen to have named them something different in another platform or in your file. And one more. Then when I choose to import data, give a couple of seconds for it to load and all the items entered in the platform and you can now edit them as you would as though you had just created them. So you still have the ability to go in and add a response um, change, you know, and edit as we've previously described. One thing to note, as you are importing, if you have a name of an item that matches an, a name already in the platform, it will not import that item and replace it with the previous existing item. So the na names you import all do need to be unique. So that's just something to think about in terms of your naming conventions. If they align with something specific, a numbering system, et cetera, that might be most helpful for you. 
We're excited that Assessments 2.0 is backwards compatible. So if you want to go revise events that you have already scored, maybe add private or public comments, you certainly can do that. If you want to revise previous assessment templates, that will actually go back to all of your previous assessments as well, and you will be able to update those if you have new items you wanted to add, for example. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that looks like. I'm going to edit the lifecycle default assessment. So you can see I've pulled up all of my previously created categories and items. And you'll notice on the right hand side, it tells us if items have been or categories have been in use. So that if I choose to delete the item, know that it's going to be removed from all of your previous events. I can still edit these items. So if I wanted to add Maybe I want to add a response that is unsatisfactory. I could do that. Or maybe if I want to go in and add um, scoring tips for all of my items. So review LCI asset list and explanation of why workstation security is important. I could explain that here. So now this will be backwards compatible onto all of your previous assessments. So I'm going to save these changes. And now let's go take a look at where that lands on previous events. So let's go take a look when I did the baseline of this assessment. I just went in and you can see I added unsatisfactory, unsatisfactory as an option here. And then when I went back to workstations, now if I show scoring instructions, I'll be able to see them as well. Uh, same thing with explanation and remediation tips. The last piece of functionality, which folks certainly have asked for, is what happens when I create a comparison, uh, so a comparison assessment the second time. So I've done a benchmark assessment, now I wanna do my comparison off of that, or I'm on my second QBR. Now, the last time I give this, I'm trying to remember what did I assign in this particular assessment? Well, I can show previous responses and see that a quarter ago, this was at risk. We remember that we did a project and we took care of the situation, so now we're satisfactory, fully aligned. So this is pretty exciting that now you can stay right on the page, see what you previously scored, see those public and private comments. So if you made any notes here about what project you added to, uh, complete this, you would know how to add, how to respond within this particular assessment. One last reporting update that we have added is under analytics by customer. So now you have uh, you're familiar with this screen where we can take a report and its comparison and show that you can really show improvement here. But now we have the ability to download that to a Word doc so that you could share it with your client. You can upload your logo if you would like, but I'll just grab a quick download and show that now you can print this out and show your client that, you know, when we were at the baseline, you were 38 in business applications and software. And now that we've completed this project, you've grown to a 93 and you can really show their return on their investment and how you have helped improve the health of their technology. Special for this uh, release because people have asked to be able to see how they had previously scored something. So we're excited about Assessments 2.0. We hope you are as well. If you have any questions, you can always reach out and find us. And uh, happy life cycling.